Hi, welcome to Shaky Sports Journeys. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, please be sure to be subscribing to the channel. Much appreciated. A special today. I'm going to call it the 100 special um, with uh, three amazing guests who recently starred in the, the 100 tournament that took place in England. Uh, so I say hello to Catherine and Sarah Bryce and Abdaha Maksud. How are you all? Good, thank you. Yeah, all good, thanks. Yeah, I'm all good, thank you. Good, good. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Took a bit of time to get this together. You are all very busy girls. University, cricket, so many different things going on. Uh, but we've got you all together at the one time, so it's much, much appreciated. So what I want to do is chat through your recent experience. I mean, it was inspiring to watch from back home in Glasgow, all three of you perform on the big stage. Um, and I guess my first question was, how was it when you arrived to meet your new squads um, and I'll come to Sarah first. Yeah, well, um, we obviously arrived at the hotel to start with and then it was quite exciting. As soon as I got in my room, there was a box of kit kind of there straight away and kit's always very exciting when you first really? um, opening it all up and seeing it uh, for the first time. And I have to say, I think my team had the best kit. I mean, I know there's a lot of arguments over that, but it was definitely up there with the best. Um, and then, yeah, we just kind of got together as a team. We weren't able to have a team meal the first night, which we kind of sort of were going to have because of the COVID restrictions and the safe living guidance kind of things that we had to uh, go by. So there was kind of a lot of eating meals in the room, uh, which was a bit of a shame. But yeah, no, it was nice just to kind of get together on that first evening with, with most of us and um, kind of meet your teammates. You, you kind of know most people anyway through county cricket or, you know, some some um, means. But um, yeah, no, it was nice just kind of meeting everyone and kind of getting into it. Yeah. Catherine? Yeah, ours, so a lot of the, the Trent Rocket girls are actually part of Lightning as well. So probably a large proportion um, kind of already been playing cricket with for the last couple, the couple of months before. Um, and also the, the coach as well, um, Sal, she was at Loughborough um, a few years ago, so kind of knew her already. So um, it took away a little bit of that kind of nervousness and, and unknown. Um, but I was lucky enough to be able to kind of stay at home still um, just with just with where the location was and um, so that was nice to kind of still have those home cooked meals um, but also be close enough and just kind of get to know everyone. Brilliant. After um, I think I was a little bit different where I didn't know anyone at all um, so it was quite daunting. Uh, I only knew Kirsty Gordon who uh, we used to play with um, when she played for Scotland a few years ago um, but I literally knew no one, so it was quite scary. Um, so my first night, I was actually on my own. Nobody had arrived. And then it was the second night when I kind of met um, most of the team. And then we started training the day after that. Uh, and that's when I met everyone. And it was obviously amazing. The kit was amazing. Um, a lot of it as well. <laughs> um, we don't get that much in Scotland. But uh, yeah, it was it was great. Yeah, amazing feeling, isn't it? When you go when you go to something like that and you get all the kit and it sounds like you were well spoiled. But you especially Sarah, just walking into the room and it's just sitting there waiting for you. That's uh, that's like Christmas escape early. So I bet you were uh, I bet you were I bet there was a good mess in the room, tried everything on, a couple of selfies, I hope. And uh, you know, that's that, that, that that's what that's what it's all about. Get get the excitement building up. So how intense was the, the training and the prep? How long did it go on for until you actually went into the opening game, Abdaha? her? Um, for us, I think we had about a week. Um, and it was literally just training every other day, um, gym and stuff like that, just like normal kind of what we do back here. Um, but it was just that little bit more intense because um, I don't, I don't usually get as much training over here than I do over there. Um, so it was a little bit more intense and it did feel like this was like a proper big tournament that I was a part of. Um, so yeah, that that week was just basically just getting to grips with everything and getting to know everyone. But similar for yourself, Catherine? Yeah, I think probably slightly shorter kind of build up period. Um, it was, those thing, had a couple of training sessions and our first warm up game was against Abtos team which was nice to kind of get out there and yeah I think it, it was quite intense um but not not too like really focused and like 
really intense training I think it was more of still trying to like figure out what what kind of roles are we going to be fitting into um in the team so just kind of taking on as much information as possible kind of about the format and their their kind of ideas of how how we want to play the game and kind of set up as a team um, and things like that and trying to figure that out as quickly as possible um so not too kind of like high intense in terms of like the training volume and things like that but um yeah just trying to figure figure out what this this new game was going to be like well that's that's interesting you mentioned that the actual new game because in, in that week you all would have been learning and you know it would have been a t- totally new concept i mean the coaches and stuff probably will have been planning for a little bit longer but as a player you really don't know I'd imagine what to expect and how to go about, you know, if you're bowling a couple of overs or something, it's totally different from bowling a 10 over spell or, you know, you're going to bowl four overs, four, just mm. the first few games were a bit complicated. I, I, I was finding myself trying to pick it up a little bit. Um, and when I did pick it up, I started understanding the game a little bit more. Then it, then it made a little bit more sense. Sarah, could you have imagined when you arrived there? I mean, obviously there was a buzz about it, but could you have imagined the success that was about to come over the course of the next couple of weeks in the tournament? No, not at all. I don't think anyone could have predicted that. And no one knew exactly how it was going to go. There was obviously quite a few people that were quite sceptical about, about it. Um, but yeah, I think it was just really exciting to be part of something new. Um, and yeah, we kind of had a couple of warm-up games before um, the actual tournament um, started. And we were just trying to like work out the different tactics and work out exactly how it was going to go. But I think I knew it was going to be exciting when you have someone like Becky Hill coming and singing to be in the middle of your game and it was going to be an atmosphere, uh, but you never know exactly how it's going to be. But after that first game, I was just like, wow, this is this is crazy. Um, yeah, I w- that, that first game was, was extremely special and I don't know if I'll ever experience something quite like that again. But um, yeah, from then on, I, I had a sense that it was it was going to be go all right, and then it just kind of kept getting better and better. I think so. Yeah, it was really good. You talk about that first game, and I mentioned to you before you came on. I was actually out celebrating my wife's birthday that night. That the, the, your first game. I was sitting in the hotel, and there was a massive screen, um, and I seen Bryce, and you were wicket keeping at the Oval, and it's the first time I've been able to see you. I know you were a wicket keeper, but I've never really had the opportunity to see you much. We don't get to see our players on on TV very often, and I was. Very, very impressed. And then throughout the tournament, you know, you're really tidy wicket keeper, really, really natural hands. And it was a hard, I don't think I've seen you make an error in the tournament. So, you know, good effort. And the, and the girl bowling, the South African, I think, is, she had a bit of pace, a bit more than what you would have normally kept against. Yeah, both um, Cappy and um, Ishmael um, definitely have a bit more kind of pace and fire about them, um, I think, than I've ever experienced before. Uh, so, yeah, that was a fun challenge kind of to experience something like that. Just a bit well, faster than me. A little just bit. Just a little bit. bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Catherine, I watched you bowl in your opening game. I thought you bowled, thought you bowled quite tidy. It was coming out quite nicely. You seemed to be finding your areas. You were changing your pace up well. But you didn't seem to to get as many opportunities, unfortunately, as the as the other two girls. Why was that? Yeah, I think it was probably quite difficult. Um, and maybe I think with that that way that the ends work, and um, with some things, kind of one of our main tactics was kind of using swing as much as possible early on. Um, so I think with like ten at each end, if you bowled kind of five at one, and then someone else was bowling well at the other end, um, probably didn't bowl kind of as much and um, I think we had quite a strong bowling attack with um, kind of having like Catherine Brunt and Nat Siver um, in there so probably personally a bit disappointed to, to not bowl more and um, probably wasn't completely my best um, at times in the tournament but I think I tried to just do my job um, when I got the opportunity and hopefully kind of over the years I'll just keep on developing and um, just keep on taking the chances you get hopefully. Well listen you've been having such a success, such a success in your, your Scottish, your county career. You know, in sports, it swings and roundabouts, ups and downs. And I'm sure come next year, tournament again, you'll be, you'll be firing in all cylinders and you'll be better off for the experience as well. But um, Abdaha came out nicely for you from the start of the tournament. I mean, I was just like scanning through social media and it was just like Abdaha McSood everywhere. How, how did that? How did that feel? And how was it? I mean, you will. I imagine when you're over in Lamanga, 
don't imagine there's too many people watching you. All of a sudden, being in a stadium, you know, with a lot of people shouting, what was it like? You know, did your hand feel nice and loose? Was the rest ready to go? Um, it was different. Um, I've obviously never done that before in my life. Just having so many people watch you. I think that first game, there was like 10,000 people watching and I was like, this is crazy. You know, the noise and the music and just the crowd constantly shouting and stuff is, is really weird. Um, but after a while, I mean, I don't know if the Bryce's feel the same. You just kind of get used to it. Um, you get, you don't, you kind of just drown it out and you just realise that you're just playing cricket and it's like any other game. Um, but yeah, it took, it took like a game for me to realise that. <laughs> Well, it's a totally new experience, you know, something that you've never done before. So, you know, I kind of, I, but I mean, you you seem to go from strength to strength. You you seem to take it in your stride from then on. So it was just the one game, right? Okay, I get what this ten thousand people thing's all about. I'll just drown it out from now on and start ripping them. Was that pretty much the mentality then? Um, yeah, I think so. I think um, after that first game, you know, I kind of got the idea that right, this is what it's all about. And then I think it was the second game against Manchester where um, that was probably my favourite game um, where I probably bowled the best I bowled. Um, and that was when I realised, yeah, this is a big deal. Like when I got my phone back after that, um, that's when I was like, yeah, this is like the 100 is big. Definitely. Sarah, there was a real camaraderie, it seemed, which I thought was really nice between the men and the, and the women, it seemed like you were all playing as one squad. How was that for you? And, and am I right in saying both your teams won it, didn't they? Am I wrong in saying that? Uh, we both got to the eliminator. Right, sure. okay. Uh, but um, the men, unfortunately, didn't get I was following the women's turn, women's side of the tournament. Yeah, more. much more I'm important. I'm yeah. enough, I see enough men's cricket as it is. So, but uh, yeah, just commenting on that, how was that, you know, mixing shoulders with the guys as well? Yeah, it was a little bit of a shame, I think, with the with COVID and the safe of the big guidelines and all that kind of thing that we weren't able to mix, I don't think, as much as we would have liked to and we potentially could have. So I think going forward, that's definitely something that I think will increase. But there was definitely a sense that it was very much one team with two squads and kind of thing. And you, you would always see them around kind of between games or whatever, and um, they would always say good luck and... Um, they were really nice and they actually sent us a video um, with a, a load of the guys kind of wishing us well. I think it was the last game before the Eliminator uh, where if we won it, then we would get through. And yeah, they sent us a video saying kind of good luck and wishing us well. Um, and I think just kind of little things like that made you feel um, kind of really like you were one team. Um, so yeah, no, that was really nice. Catherine, strike up any new friendships? I mean, we were talking about the guys there and, and rubbing shoulders. Now, I'm sure it's no secret when you're saying this, you watch a lot, you would have watched a lot of these guys playing on TV. You know them well, you know, you're probably fans of some of them. Was there anyone that you wanted to spend some time with and have a chat that you managed to do so? Yeah, I think it's probably similar um, in what Sarah said, especially at the start, like with with all the COVID worries, there was, there was less kind of mixing um, of the teams. But I think it's kind of, created the opportunity where it's more open you know you kind of see them around and about you can you know they know who you are and you can have a chat with them um sort of thing going forward and I think that definitely um will hopefully kind of open up that those opportunities so it's not like they I don't know the man never want to speak to us before but um when you're kind of part of the same team they definitely like Sarah said have that feeling that you were you're kind of part of the one squad and and fighting for the trophy together and I think definitely in the future um it'll open up a lot more kind of communication um I guess that if there's someone like you said after you spoke to um Imran Tahir was it yeah um and kind of got tips and stuff from him so kind of just being around and then be like oh well you're a trend rocket as well rather than I think in the past it's been quite a lot like we'd play as Loughborough Lightning and then Knots might be on after as like the double header. So like, there's no real connection there, but I think um, there's, there'll hopefully kind of be be that sort of communication between the two squads and you can kind of take some more stuff from them in the future. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was great viewing to see that there was that camaraderie and hopefully that's something that improves even more coming out of COVID times. 
Hopefully you can spend a bit more time together because it's it's that's what it's all about in these kind of tournaments is getting to mix shoulders with players from all, which you were getting to do anyway, which I'm sure you thrived on and picking the brains of some of the, the best in the world that you were playing with. Scotland, unfortunately, never had any men in the tournament, but women, we had three. And, you know, how is the morale within your squad back home, Catherine, as captain? How encouraging are you to encourage the next generation to push to get these type of opportunities now that there's a bit of, there's a view there that you know we could go down that route yeah definitely and i think it's huge that he, like someone like abta was in involved in it as well because um i guess over the last couple of years with me and sarah being down south already i think some people are kind of like oh it's the Bryces are just doing it and they're whatever um and whereas now where abta has kind of had that opportunity and it's opening up more people are i think more seeing like actually yeah there is a space for for us to to kind of reach that level and it there is the opportunity to to play in these competitions and actually we're good enough if if we work hard enough and kind of get that opportunity and and get noticed then um they are looking and and they'll they'll notice players that are doing well in in different competitions so i think it's definitely kind of opened up some more avenues and hopefully encouraged a lot of people i, I spoke to rosie ryan um after it or I maybe when when I saw her at the final and she was like oh it's amazing kind of the um there was people down at was it a Dynamo's cricket or all stars or something like that and they were like oh yeah like we're playing cricket because we watched the hundred and things like that and I think seeing that is is incredible so hopefully kind of inspiring the next generation of the Scottish cricketers coming through as well. well definitely I mean my my family were down at quite a lot of the tournament my nephew made a little bit of a name for himself my nephew Jan he's kind of cricket crazy he was commentating and everything. He met Andrew Flintoff, he met Darren Sammy, he met Abtar McSood. You know, that was, I think it was near the end of the tournament. Was it, was it, was it at Lords or because they were at Lords as well? He actually got invited down, especially by the 100, to attend at Lords as well. So he's like a, he's a he's, How old was he? He's quite young, wasn't he? He's, he, Jan will be seven. I should really know that off the top of my head. So yeah, <laughs> I'm quite, at seven. Quite, he's doing well. Yeah, pretty young. He's pretty confident. <laughs> you know, maybe he'll be doing something like this in future and doing podcasts. I don't know. Yeah, he'll, he'll take it over from you. <laughs> hopefully played in the 100 himself. I, yeah. I would love to see that. Yeah. Um, where was it you met them after? At, at Edgebaston, I think. I think it was the last... It must have been the last home game for us. Um, and I remember the game before at Edgebaston as well. He was up on the big screen and just... You know, they were asking him questions and stuff like that. And they were like, oh, where are you from? And he said, Glasgow. And everyone in my team just looked at me like, oh, do you know him? And I was like, no, <laughs> Glasgow is a pretty big place. Um, and then they were like, oh, who's your favourite player? And everyone was just like, oh, Derek, he's going to see you. He's going to see you. And he said, Moina Lee and Lee, Liam Livingston. And in my yeah. heart, I just sank. Oh, I was okay. like, oh, this is horrible. And he plays at the same club as well. Yeah. So it was like, oh wow. wow. Um, but then I went and get, saw him after to meet them, both of them at the last game. So that's probably why he was just destined to say that. But as far as yeah. I know now, I think it's after I think I think it's you. I oh, think I'd hope so, yeah. He's a fan, he's a fan of yours now, <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah. so Sarah, just just on just on all of this, who did you get to work with that was quite in particular with your wicket keeping? Was there anyone do you manage to get that that extra bit of time with it just took your keeping to the next level? Yeah, well, Jonathan Batty, who was our head coach, uh, was actually a wiki keeper. He was a keeper for Surrey um, for quite a while, I think. So, yeah, no, it was really great being able to kind of work with him and um, just to spend a bit of time kind of with that. And it's always nice having a coach, I think, that's a wiki keeper because, you know, you're often kind of left to your own devices, but he actually appreciated us and spent some time with us. So that was really nice kind of to have him around. And was it was did you get quite a bit of one to one time with him? Yeah, so me and Rihanna Southby, who was the other keeper in the squad, um, with him spent quite a lot of time together, so that was really good. Good, good, glad to hear it. So, Catherine, I need to move you to the side for a second at this point because we need to talk about the final. Unfortunately, your team sponsored by Skips. I hope they gave you plenty of packets of crisps because that's what I kept thinking. I loved it. I love Skips. Um, need some more. But, yeah. Uh, at the minute, when you send the podcast out, say, Skips, can you send me some crisps? <laughs> uh, going into a final at Lords, like, doesn't get any bigger than that. Did you sleep the night before, both of you? Or were you trying to, did you try to poison our poison food or something like that after? 
Um, well, I, I didn't, I didn't, we didn't make the final. We were in the like the semi-finals. Yeah. The but <laughs> we were in the semi-finals at um, the Oval. So it was I us. I was thinking about the semi-finals. Yeah. Yeah. I've had, had a couple of bloopers. So had, right, I, ask the question again. I'll put my hands up. So could you just talk me through the semi-final, please? Um, yeah, so that was crazy. Um, I had never been to the Oval before. So, you know, going there and then for the first time and then actually playing there was amazing. I literally like walked in, I didn't realize how big it was. It was actually huge. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, the night before we just kind of like thought of it as like another like normal kind of game. We tried not to put too much pressure on it. Um, but yeah, it was it was huge. There was a lot of people there, a lot more than there were at Edge Baston. So it was a big deal. Um, but yeah, I loved it. I loved every moment of it, except from when we lost. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I really put my foot in it there. Must have been absolutely gutted then that this you and the squad that you never never managed to make the final. Uh, yeah, yeah, we were especially with the way that we lost. We kind of bottled it a little bit, um, but uh, yeah, I was. It, it is what it is, you know. We it was quite lucky that we even got there. I think we didn't have the greatest starts. Um, we were bottom of the table at one point, so to make it third was really huge for us. So we are really proud of what we did, um, even if we didn't get to the final. Um, but yeah, I was just happy for Sarah, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, so just coming to you now, Sarah, you definitely made the final. I seen you, yeah. there was fireworks going off, you had a trophy, yeah. you were celebrating. So no more bloopers from me. How <laughs> was it going in, you know, going into final at Lords? Yeah, it was it was crazy. Um and it was also a really strange day because there was a lot of rain around and the forecast was not good at all. Um so when we arrived, we didn't think we'd start on time and then it suddenly started to look a bit clearer and then we were going to start town time so um yeah it was all a bit strange but I just remember kind of when I was warming up um I was doing some keeping warm up uh, with with Jonathan Batty and he just took me um to the side for a minute and we was like just soak this all in um enjoy this occasion whatever happens today just in, enjoy it because uh, this is a really special day and I think that was really important and something that was kind of quite big around our squad is it wasn't all about kind of the result at the end of the day. It was just about enjoying what was, I guess, a historic occasion. It, yeah, and it's just really special. I mean, Lords is, I mean, it's the home of cricket. It's, I've watched cricket there. I watched the World Cup final there in 2017. I always kind of wanted to just play on a pitch like that. And I didn't think I'd ever play on Lords and I certainly never thought I'd play a final on Lords or win a final on Lords so yeah it was just incredible and it's still kind of sinking in like it still doesn't really feel 100% real. I can imagine I can imagine just pinching yourself how proud were you both Catherine big sister watching little sister on the big stage in the final you know probably sad that you weren't partaking in it as well but so proud of her I would imagine. Yeah, definitely. It was incredible to be able to watch, I think, um, and just take it all in. So um, we managed to, we were sat up in the pavilion, us, mum and dad, and I don't think there was many Oval supporters up there, unfortunately. <laughs> so we were a bit in the minority, especially in the second half when we were jumping up and like, yes. <laughs> um, but no, it was fantastic. It's so proud to kind of see her out there and, and performing so well as well. And um, just kind of knowing and taking it in and what a big occasion was. And um, she really sorted me out as well. Cause I said at the start of the day, I said, mom, if she wins, we're getting a bottle of champagne. Um, <laughs> and she did. So she pulled through on that one. <laughs> um, but I think it was just an incredible um, kind of experience to be part of and, and seeing you um, kind of go through it and, and be so successful I think it worked out quite well like the way that you started the competition and that first ever game that you played in to to kind of go around and um and come back and, and win the final and um do it in such a, a great team spirit as well yeah I agree I agree awesome um coming to the coming to the back end I guess the question I have for all of you is do you feel better off as cricketers for the experience of playing in the 100 uh, and what's your future goals now? I'll go to the skipper first. Yeah, I think it's always, um, it always kind of stands in, in good stead. And I think we I've had quite a nice 
build up to to that sort of tournament and um, having played in the Super League before kind of sort of being exposed to that sort of franchise cricket and um, being around a little bit of the stuff in the WBBL as well kind of seeing those kind of tournaments take off and I think hopefully that I think you even saw I think throughout the competition and from other other tournaments how how much the standards just improved of women's cricket and I think the more more games you play at that level and um, the more it's going to just have to improve your game um, because you just have to keep on improving with with all these other players and having having that opportunity to get to know players from all around the world that have played international cricket and learn from their experiences as well I think um, is is really important to then rise uh, raise the standard of the cricket just below it as well which I think um, I think is huge and I think you'll just see that increasing so much more and with with the um the, the spectacle of the whole thing just the number of people that came came to watch the women's game and so many of our friends that have known know that we play cricket for years and we'll be like oh yeah you play cricket blah 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 actually seeing us playing in the hundred and then actually going on to follow it um and getting really invested in it like they've it's not like they've never known that cricket exists because of us but they've actually got into this tournament so I think it'll just be huge kind of over the next five years or something it'll, it'll really take off even further that to have for you um yeah it was definitely the best experience of my life I was honestly having the time of my life there um I was really nervous before it um I thought it was going to be just too much for me like really daunting really I was just really nervous but when I got there I was like this is amazing um and it really did do so much for women's cricket like I don't think anything else has ever done what the 100 did for women's cricket and I'm honestly so happy about that and just like little things like whenever we would walk around the boundary after the match and there would be people coming up to me and saying just the nicest things about being an inspiration and you know the representation and stuff like that and um, it honestly did warm my heart and you know seeing things on social media all the good stuff it was just amazing I've never I've never seen anything like it so yeah it's made me a better person better cricketer and hopefully can't wait to do it all over again you've done me a favor as well because you because you're that inspiring my views on our podcast went to the roof i woke up one morning like okay i maybe do four or five hundred views sometimes 600 that you know that's high end i just went on my phone and i'm like three thousand views how's this happened and I was just, and then I did a search on your name and our podcast was like first or second. I was like, yes, they know. And everywhere I was looking on social media, I to like, so it's trending. I'm like, keep going, girl. Keep coming <laughs> those leg spinners out. That's, that's what I love. Time now. I think, I think for, a, for Asian people in particular, especially for young Asian girls out there, I think you will have opened up so many minds at home and parents may be thinking, you know, shouldn't we get our daughters involved in something like that? Um, because I think you, we would welcome there's so many Asians that play cricket. Most girls know how to play, believe it or not. They just don't get the opportunity to do so. So hopefully a couple more talented Asian girls coming into the Scotland squad in the future would, would, would be great. Sarah, what about what about you? Do you feel that this, this whole experience changed you as a person and as a cricketer? Yeah, it felt like it was the start of something special. Um, and hopefully that momentum can carry on. Um, and I know the ECB have already said, I think that they're going to continue with the double headers next year, which I think is a good thing. And hopefully it can just continue to get kind of bigger and better um, and just kind of spread as well. And hopefully, like Catherine was saying about people coming uh, and Rosie was saying um, about people going to kind of all stars and dynamos and hopefully add some older kind of adults as well, starting cricket. Um, as a result of the 100 in Scotland and that that will the influence of the 100 will help the, the Scotland team as well and hopefully we'll just see that kind of grow and spread um, kind of globally I guess and it just shows I think what the women's game can do there you know it is, it is a great game and there's a lot of really good players within it and it's only going to get bigger and better and I think that just kind of showed and hopefully kind of playing in it you know with us playing in it hopefully some more Kind of girls can get involved will get better as players as well you know you learn so much from playing at the highest standard and um that will just kind of feed through and yeah it's really excited i think to you know it's to see what's what's coming next as well it's amazing yeah likewise um i think it's a really exciting time i can see the excitement on all three of you when you're talking about the hundred it's like 
it really is. You must be pinching yourself that you've just been involved in the very first one. And I reckon, like you said, in five years' time, Catherine, ten years' time, I've got a feeling it's going to be it's going to be through the roof. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully, all three of you, you know, still quite young, cut five years' time, you know, use our player of the tournament or something like that. Who know, Who knows? And hopefully, some more more Scottish girls coming through as well. Listen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Please stay on for a second. Um, and, I, and I'll catch you, but really appreciate all three of you coming on and, and keep keep uh, flying the flag for Scotland and keep doing great. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having us.